So let's start with DNA. Here's the DNA right here. To package this up in a eukaryotic cell, what we have to do first is keep it under control so that it doesn't break. To do that, we package it in this very, very careful way. We put it around these structures here, which are proteins. And those proteins are called histones. Here's a pair of histone proteins around which the yellow DNA is wrapped. If you were to see it for real, it would actually look something like this. The green globules here are two different histone proteins, and the pink and red are the two different strands of the DNA. And you can see that they're wrapped around each protein exactly twice. Now, that's just the beginning of how to package up this DNA double helix. So imagine this. Imagine a chromosome here is this long structure, and it's about the thickness. The thickness right here is the same as kite string. Imagine that that were the scale that we were dealing with. If that's true, then the average length of the average chromosome in your cells is approximately 12 miles long. Okay? So at the scale, if this were the size of kite string, then your chromosome would be about 12 miles long. Each one of these histone proteins would be approximately the size of a softball. To package up that chromosome, then what we're going to do, we're going to take that kite string, and we're going to pick up a softball, and we're going to wrap the kite string around it twice. And then we're going to tape it down with another type of histone protein. And then we go a little bit further, and we do it again, so that we wrap it around twice, and then another one right next to it, wrap it around twice. And then we go a little bit further, and we wrap it around another two softballs, and then we wrap it around another two softballs, and so forth, all the way for 12 miles. Then what we do is we take the softballs, and we glue the softballs together. DNA is now all basically wrapped around them, but we glue the softballs together into this long sort of fiber. This is actually spiraling around. It's hard to see in this picture, but the fibers are sort of spiraling around each other. And we end up with a big thick thing that goes from about 12 miles to less than 4 miles. And it ends up with this structure that we call a solenoid chromatin fiber. So each one of these blobs here, each one of these uh, collections of two histones with DNA wrapped around it is called a nucleosome, a little body that's found within the uh, cell itself. And this solenoid fiber then is essentially just packaged up and laid into the nucleus in this material that's called chromatin. So chromatin is the DNA and the histones and all the other stuff together that makes up the solenoid fibers, all just sort of dumped into the nucleus. Now if we look at this for real, there was a study that was done not long ago that basically mapped out the chromatin and the solenoid fibers of all the DNA in a particular cell. What you're looking at here is that study. This is a computer model that's based on data that was obtained from a single cell nucleus. Each one of these different colors represents a different chromosome. So here's one, the blue is a different chromosome and so on. And you can see that all of this chromatin, all this material, of all the 46 chromosomes in a, in a human cell are just all basically dumped together. So that's how DNA is packaged in a normal cell for most of its life. Throughout most of its life, it's like this. However, when the cell needs to divide, these chromosomes will begin to condense. And they condense into a structure that you've seen before. That's this. This is not how DNA is packaged in the cell for the majority of its life. The only time that's packaged up into this condensed form is when the cell is getting ready to divide. But when it does that, when it packages itself into this condensed form, you have then two seemingly different chromosomes that are actually bound together right here at this structure called the centromere. Turns out these are not really two independent chromosomes yet. This arm right here is called a chromatid, and we'll make that more clear in, in lab. This is the sister chromatid to this one. They are sisters because they're essentially identical twins. They're copies of each other, and they're connected together again by the centromere. Tips here, 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 and here are referred to as telomeres. And each one of these chromatids uh, contains two different arms. Here's the upper arm of this chromatid. Here's the lower arm of this chromatid. The left-hand chromatid also has a lower arm and an upper arm. So this is what the chromosomes look like. Usually, this is what the chromosomes look like only when they're getting ready to divide, when the cell is getting ready to divide. Now, if we look at a cell that is in its normal configuration, and we are able to highlight each individual chromosome, which we've done here with a process called FISH, and I'll make that more clear. I'll talk about exactly what that is in just a moment. 
then this is what it would look like. But when the cell is getting ready to divide, this is what the chromosomes look like. So these are all condensed chromosomes here. So all of these different colors here that I'm circling with the cursor are these condensed chromosomes like this. This one is one where the chromosomes are not condensed. So it's like this. OK, now, to make this picture, here's what the researchers did. They developed a probe, which is something that binds to a specific DNA sequence. Remember, we talked a little bit about DNA sequences, the sequences of nucleotides, A, C, G, T, and so forth, on the DNA. And each one of those probes also will fluoresce a unique color. So the probe will bind to DNA, but it only binds to DNA of a single particular sequence. It doesn't bind to just random DNA. It only binds to DNA of a particular sequence. And it fluoresces a unique color. Now, this is an actual human set of chromosomes. And if you look carefully, you'll notice something. You see this chromosome and this chromosome? They're the exact same color. But what I just said was that the probes are unique colors, which means a probe that fluoresces blue like this will only bind to a particular DNA sequence. Now, that, what this tells us is this. This blue probe found two identical DNA sequences on different chromosomes, this one and this one. And if you look at this, for example, over here, you'll see this one here fluoresces yellow. This one also fluoresces exactly the same. So this is, again, the same exact probe has found the exact same DNA sequence on two different chromosomes. Here again, purple. This probe found the DNA sequence here and it found the exact same DNA sequence here. And in fact, if you look carefully at all of this, you'll see that all of them are like that. You can pair them up. Here are these two yellow ones. There's this one and that one. Carefully, they've just taken a picture and they've put them together. And then there are two red ones and two blue ones, two green ones and so forth, all the way down to a total of 23 pairs. So what this is saying is that, for whatever reason, inside your cells, the chromosomes have always a mate. An individual chromosome has another one that has exactly the same DNA sequence. Do you know why that is? It actually makes perfect sense. This right here is a chromosome that this individual got from one of its parents, say its mother. It got the exact same chromosome from its father. So the DNA on dad's chromosome is the same as the DNA on mom's chromosome. So these form a pair. And I'll define what that pair is called here in just a moment. But you might be wondering, how can that be? Because mom and dad are different, right? There's no way that mom and dad's DNA are the same. Actually, mom and dad's DNA are almost 100% identical, just slightly different. In fact, my DNA is almost identical to yours. All human beings have extremely similar DNA, 98% similarity. The differences are very, very minor, and the differences are so minor that the probes can't see them. So even though there might be one or two differences on this chromosome compared to this chromosome, because this one came from dad and this one came from mom, the probe will still bind because 98% are exactly the same. This then is what we call a karyotype, a karyotype, and it's a spectral karyotype because we're using different probes of different colors to highlight the different DNA. Now, do you know, is this a male or a female? Can you tell? How can you tell? Look here. There's two X chromosomes. That means that this individual, which again is a real picture, this is not a cartoon or made up, this comes from an actual analysis, this individual here is a female. She's also healthy. Every single chromosome has two. Sometimes, however, you can end up with three. For example, you can end up with what's called trisomy 21. If you have three of these number 21 chromosomes, that's called trisomy, then you end up with a disease called Down syndrome, which you've heard of before. So this is how it is that we package up DNA, and this is the relationships among the different chromosomes in the cell. Cells always have chromosomes that are paired in human cells, and many other cells are like that, but not all. Not all creatures are like this. We'll continue with this here in just a moment.